about this movie because you guys have a very cool connection to this. Yes. Um, you want to tell them? <laughs> so, when Melissa was doing Sabrina the Teenage Witch, we had a deal with Disney to do feature films, so we were very interested in this movie. Well, this is what, uh, I can't talk right now. <laughs> so, Melissa was uh, a huge fan of the original film. This was a movie she watched when she was a kid over and over and over again. And when we were trying to find movies for her to do, she said, this is what I want to remake. So that was many, many years 19 ago. 19 years ago or something now at this point. Yeah. yeah. Something like and, that. Um, yeah, so we really wanted to remake it. And so, because, you know, she's my mommy and my producing partner, <laughs> she was like, my baby wants it. So, you know, 17 years later, she got her hands on the rights. And uh, this time I was too old to play Jan and too young to play Mrs. Aylwood. <laughs> so, I tried to play Mrs. Aylwood. She wouldn't let she, yeah. she wanted to be Mrs. Aylwood. I wanted to be Mrs. Aylwood. It would have taken hours well, and hours just to put Prestel our makeup, But our makeup team from Sabrina now does America. They just won so many Emmys. They do The Feud, oh, they, they do, do American uh, Horror Story, okay. they did Glee, they did Nip Tuck, you know. So, I knew that, you know, I could... Wait, I'm sorry, the Sabrina the Teenage Witch makeup team is working with Ryan Murphy now? Uh, oh, yes. yes. They are, they... Okay, their visit. lives took a very strange yeah. turn. <laughs> well, they've always been obsessed with, like, you know, um, that kind of, like, witch culture and okay. stuff like that. All so right. it's uh, Halloween, like, their houses are already decorated for uh. Halloween right now. Um, mainly Erin, Erin Kruger of McCash, who is, uh... Oh, right, okay. Who's the lead. So she's, um, yeah, she's, she's Ryan Murphy's... Perfect. Main girl, yeah. um, and so he stole I figured from she us. could. Well, her husband's like she's she married into a big family of um, uh, prosthetics. So I was like, I I can do it. I can yeah. play Mrs. Elwood. Or you could have done like a CW version where like Mrs. Elwood was younger and like oh, yeah, just yeah. a bunch of hot teens. Yeah, hot teenagers with short skirts. We're doing that with Sabrina. Yeah, so we don't yeah. have to do that. Oh, anymore. speaking of sorry, one thing. Oh yeah. Let's talk about this. That's, we're not involved in that. So yeah. whatever yeah. it is that they're doing, I have no clue. Yeah, but I'm assuming it's going to be a little Buffy esque. That's what it sounds like to me. You had there are seven heart kids. Yes. There are. Well, so, there's 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 eight, but one of them is not hers. Oh. <laughs> but you guys, this was a movie like that you guys would do the slumber party thing and the, yes. the oh, yeah. like, staying up late. So night. when we were making the movie, there were certain things that we wanted to hold really true to. Things that so I I haven't watched the, I hadn't watched the original movie in a very long time. It had been like many many years. You know, I, I can't even remember the last time I watched it. So certain things after you know when you when you watch something like that for like two three four years of your life over and over and over again, you remember certain things. And so, remaking this, Scott Abbott, our writer, did an amazing job, first of all, of um, doing a reimagining. One of the things that was always so weird, and you mentioned it in the intro, was that the, the sci-fi element of it was always a little strange. It came from the book, and Disney tried to do it, and Disney pulled the movie out of the theaters and redid the ending numerous times when the, when the original came out, what, 1981? Yes. With Betty Davis? And they redid the ending, but it had this sci-fi element, and it always kind of was confusing. We were just talking about this backstage. Yeah. It was just so bizarre, and you, you've seen all three of these different endings, yes. right? So, you know, anybody who's watched the original, you can get it on DVD now with the three different endings. Sorry. I'm not really good at this. This isn't my thing. Um, but the, the endings, you know, they brought her up to the spaceship, or then another time you just saw the alien. Uh, which is actually pretty accurate with the book, except that the alien was throughout the book. This time, we've reimagined it as a ghost story. So it's not It's not as, it's not as there's not different worlds colliding. It's just a, a, a straightforward ghost story, but it still has a lot of, so what I, what I did, what I really wanted to do, what we made sure of was that there were certain elements in it that stuck, and my sister, <laughs> At one point, called me and goes, "Please tell me Narak. You have to get the little girl to do Narak in just the right. If you don't do Narak right, I'm not even watching it." So, like you know, so I made her remind me of exactly how. I'm like, "Tell me what you think Narak is. What do you think? You know?" Yeah. It it feels like such a gothic ghost story. You have this incredible setting. Let's talk about the location yeah. because this is. First of all, you had to find a property that had woods. Oh, well, it was, it, this, the biggest problem I had. It, because I scouted every location. I made a couple of trips to Wales to find different things. I actually went to Scotland too, and I really like Scotland, but it, it worked better in Wales for us. But I needed to find a tree, so you guys haven't seen the tree yet, uh, but there's a tree in a pond. There's a big tree. I mean, there are woods, so there's a lot of trees. But there's a tree, I needed this big old tree next to a pond, which 
I really, in the end, couldn't even find, so we ended up digging our own pond. So when you watch it and you see the pond, we dug that pond. In the middle of like a dairy farm, like a, like it was a, a dairy 500 farm. acre dairy farm or something. Oh, that, but probably, these woods, that probably smelled awesome. Uh, lunch, we didn't oh, eat lunch. Yeah, yeah. There were a few days we didn't eat lunch. <laughs> but, but we were woods, out in the woods, like way out in like in deep, deep woods that were so beautiful and haunting and gorgeous. So you, all of you Star Wars fans, I'm sure, you know uh, the... Pine uh, Pine, not Pinewood, but uh, the, the woods that they use for... Yes. Endor, yeah. Endor. It was Endor, where the, uh, the Ewoks Whoa. live. Ah. And those woods were right around the corner from the woods that we shot in. But the house... Yeah, they were like related, you know. Right. Yeah, it's, probably it's, probably, it's, probably, it's basically a Star Wars standalone show. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and just, we had the same budget. <laughs> exactly, yes. Same, in fact, same your budget. budget was so big that part of the film was done on an iPhone. Yes. Yeah, it's actually still the footage. Where's my phone? <laughs> my my, my yeah. footage is still on my phone. Um, we did some shots underwater. One of the scenes from the original movie that was uh, that I had to have in this movie was when Jan, um, the teenager, she falls backwards into a pond, and Mrs. Aylwood takes a stick and sort of is jabbing at her. And you're not really sure of her intentions. Um, and so that's one of my favorite parts from the original movie, and it had to be in this one. So um, it just wouldn't be the same movie without it. And so. Um, uh, we well, that's why we needed the pond first of all, yes. and the pond was being dredged. It had to be safe for an actress to fall in and whatnot. But um, we had to shoot some stuff underwater, and the pond was actually too murky to really film. So we found we got a pool and we covered it with black wrap, and then um, we took a quarter of a swimming pool. A quarter Just a of, a swimming, quarter pool. of a swimming pool. And the DP got in with my cell phone in a waterproof case and went underwater, and the whole thing was shot on my phone. You can buy the waterproof case on Amazon for $119. <laughs> And Which they did. Looks great. Yeah. did. That's exactly yeah. what we did. And then we stuck some branches in a pool, and it looked like we, you know, Wait, she you was see drowning in a pond. It looks incredible, and you match the footage of the the top of the pool and, and Mrs. Aylwood looking. You know, we, we see uh, like an underwater shot of her, and you'll see the brilliance that Melissa had in putting the scene together. It was really fun. Speaking, it was really great. Speaking of brilliance, Angel Houston. Yeah. Like, how do you lock in Angelica Houston? Uh, we asked her. Yeah. You just asked you said her. I asked her. If she likes it, she'll do it. I said, uh, you know, let's see if she wants to do this. And sure enough, and she I was like, we immediately. Wait, now you have to direct it. I have to direct you, Angelica. She was not happy about that. She was afraid. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, um, yeah. An how Oscar winner. That? With someone like Angelica Houston, you don't direct them. <laughs> you, you know, you don't say, so are you thinking about your backstory? And, you know, where do you think your motivation is coming from in this scene? You don't say those things. Um, you just let them do what they're doing and you keep them on point as far as story goes. So I just made sure a story, you know, story-wise it made sense because my job is the storyteller. And so I just made sure that, you know, she, you know, she was kind of taking her character in a certain direction or doing something that maybe didn't gel with where we were going in the story, you know, because that's my job to look at the whole movie and actors like to look at their part. So just to make sure that they know, oh, well, in this one, you're going to actually run, you're running after this to the woods to go see the girl, so you know, you're kind of panicked, so I need a little more energy from you, something like that. Right. Well, she has described you as, because I talked to her earlier this week, uh -oh. <laughs> um, fabulous, bright, smart, sharp, and enthusiastic, a wonderful combination. Oh, wow. Thank you. Can and I have some? That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs>